Hello, and welcome to this lesson, which will allow you to define and size a market. After you have finished this lesson, you will be able to Firstly, understand the basic concepts and components of demand analysis. Secondly, know how to utilize the standard tools for market definition. And thirdly, know how to conduct market sizing. To begin with, let's consider what is meant by demand analysis. Demand is the amount of goods that consumers or buyers are willing to buy for a specific price in a specific time period. Demand analysis is used by managers to better understand these market dynamics and to forecast the market dynamics. The key tasks in demand analysis are, firstly, to define and then size the market. Secondly, to segment the market into key customers and products. And thirdly, to estimate the market's growth potential based on its key drivers. During this lesson, you will focus on market definition and size. Segmentation and growth follow in the subsequent lessons. There are many applications of demand analysis in business. Some examples are shown in the slide, such as helping to identify the optimal market entry strategy or helping to identify the most valuable customers in a segment. Ultimately, demand analysis guides and supports management hypotheses regarding markets, customers, and potential sources of competitive advantage. Here is an overview of the demand analysis stages. You will follow this structure throughout the course. Let's begin with how to define a market. A market can be defined as the intersection between suppliers and consumers, where goods are exchanged at a price agreeable to both. Market definition is important for several reasons. From an organization's point of view, it is crucial to understand who your actual and potential competitors are with respect to the various products you now sell or might sell in the future. It is likewise important to know the product and geographic boundaries of your market to be able to set prices or determine advertising budgets. Markets can be defined broadly or narrowly based on different attributes, such as product range, time, geography, or customer type. For example, a clothing retailer could define its market broadly as women's clothing, or more narrowly, as women's yoga clothing. It really depends on which consumers the organization is targeting. You can also look at markets from either a supply side or demand side perspective. Supply side is relatively straightforward and looks at the products and substitutes being supplied into a market. Demand side looks at the products and substitutes being demanded by customers and requires market research to determine the insights. Hence, it can be time-consuming and expensive to collect demand side insights, but they can be powerful, particularly for insights into new and emerging markets. Avoid narrowly defining your market if you can, like the chart on the left of the slide. If it is too narrow, then you will have most likely ignored substitutes or competitors for your product. And if your market is too small, you will find it difficult to generate revenue, no matter how innovative the product or how competitive your pricing. Rather, seek to define your market so that it is a fair representation of the buyers and sellers that determine the price of a product or service, as per the chart on the right of the slide. It is also possible to define your market too broadly, where you include too many possible substitutes for your product or service. Low demand substitutability dilutes management's attention on the segments that matter the most and lead to the inefficient allocation of resources across geographies, products, and marketing. In the example on the slide, the US National Postal Service ran into problems in the 1990s 
when it defined its market too widely, incorrectly assuming that all of its delivery services were direct substitutes for one another. By defining its target markets more narrowly, it could focus management effort on serving specific segments and improve business performance. Let's now turn your attention to sizing a market. The two common ways to size a market are the top-down and bottom-up approaches. A top-down analysis is calculated by determining the total market sales, then estimating your share of that market. For example, if there are 300,000 people in your market and you manage to secure 5% sales from that market, then you will convert 15,000 sales. By contrast, a bottom-up analysis is calculated by estimating potential sales to determine a total sales figure. A bottom-up analysis evaluates where products can be sold, the sales of comparable products, and the estimate of current sales you can make. To size the overall market, take the underlying population of customers, then multiply by the purchase rate and value of each transaction. While it takes a lot more effort, the result is usually much more accurate. The slide presents some different market sizing scenarios. Take time to review them and consider the rationale for the suggested market sizing approach. Accurate top-down market sizing is very dependent on the quality and accuracy of the information available. Data from official sources, such as governments or industry associations, will usually prove reliable, but may not fit your exact market definition, so always scrutinize the data carefully. When bottom-up market sizing, there are two approaches you can take. The first approach estimates the demand drivers. Here you need to size the underlying population of customers then multiply by the purchase rate and value of each transaction to size the overall market. The second approach uses market interviews to provide quantitative input to market sizing. Let's look at an example of each approach. The slide shows an example of bottom-up market sizing based on the demand drivers. This insight into the key drivers also offers managers a way of isolating a theme to focus attention on how to address them. And this slide shows an example of bottom-up market sizing based on market interviews. Original market research allows managers to better estimate the true market size because the information is gleaned directly from primary sources such as customers and suppliers. However, it can be timely and expensive to collect such data. When market sizing, you can also consider some additional sensitivity dimensions in your analysis. For instance, can new customers be found if certain market conditions change, such as via a change in pricing, or the introduction of a new channel to market, or can the frequency of use of the product be increased? Cross-selling is another way of generating additional sales, as can introducing more value into the product. All of these factors can serve to increase the size of the potential market. The final stage in market sizing is to use triangulation to increase your confidence in the estimates. Triangulation seeks to examine the consistency and accuracy of your different data sources. So take time to review your approaches and consider where you have the greatest confidence. In the example on the slide, because there is high confidence in both approaches, the market size can be estimated to be the midpoint between the two approaches. In summary, you have understood how to define a market and how important it is to avoid overly broad or narrow market definitions. For market sizing, you have covered the top-down and bottom-up approaches, and if applied correctly, 
Both should generate close outputs within a reasonable range. Thank you for participating and see you next time on another exciting business training lesson from Pontema.